Welcome to IELTS Shard Ledgers. Today we are continuing with maps. First of all, I would like you to subscribe. You like and you share when you find this video useful. So as you have been doing all the time, if you have not subscribed, if today is the first time you are watching, I want you to you subscribe, you like, and you share. So thanks very much. And uh, I will also like you to follow us on our Facebook page at IELTS Lesson, so IELTS hyphen lessons. So you have the details on your screen. So thanks very much. Thanks all our partners all our viewers who have subscribed so it is not in a subscription which is important to me but it is when you practice that is so much important to me and i want you to also to share this video so it reaches as many people that will want to help this is a free public lecture so i want you to share as you as you find this video beneficial share with your colleagues so they can also uh, be blessed by this video so thanks very much so the topic for today as i said is maps in the ielts writing test the in look at the writing task one maps is one of the test areas so you could find maps and when a map question is given to you you are supposed to answer so preparing adequately and knowing all the test areas and preparing adequately is very crucial so i want you to pay attention as you watch this lecture and then uh, practice at the end of the lesson our objective for today's um, lesson is that you number one number one uh you are you are able to know the types of maps and the types of maps uh is that number one is you describe two maps you are given two maps and these two maps one is in the present and one is in the future one is in the present and one in the future so you have two two maps and one in the present and one in the future the second uh, type of map is that you describe two maps still two maps but these are different maps and one is in the present and one in the past one in the present and one in the past and the last type of map is that you describe one map in the one map in current time or in the present so the one in the present you have to use present tense present tense and then the second one which is the one in the present and one in the past so the the the, the graph which which, which is in the present, you use present tense, and then the one in the past, you use past tense. Now, the last one, or the first one that I talk about, is just describe two maps, one in the present and one in the future. So the one in the present, you still maintain the present tense, and then the one in the future, you use the future tense. So the tense is going to be in the future. So take note of that so the first objective is that you are able to organize and then uh, be able to write or describe types of maps so types of maps the second objective is going to be the that you are able to know and understand You're able to know and understand the map as a structure the essay structure 
first it says what structure should you follow when you should when you are writing a map essay then the third objective for today's lecture is that you are able to uh, know how to write map essay overview the overview for uh, map essays so that is part of the structure but this is very important to me because it's it's unique from the line graph and then the bar chart the way we write it is different from the line graph the bar chart and then the pie chart etc so it is quite unique so that's why i want it to be one of the objectives for today's lecture and then the fourth objective is that you you are go, you you, have to, you will learn the map language the language for describing maps the necessary vocabulary the relevant prepositions to describe maps very important so the map language we are going to learn that the fifth objective which is the last objective is that you go into the practicals, the practicalities of uh, maps. That means that we are going to look at map questions and then we'll provide sample map essays. Sample map essays. So we'll try our hands on some of the questions. Then you know how map questions or uh, map questions are answered. So analyze the maps and then um, we will actually provide sample answer. Good. Having done this, I want to encourage you once again to actually subscribe. So subscribe if today is the first time you are watching this video and you have not subscribed subscribe if you have been watching and you still not subscribe i want to encourage you to subscribe so that anytime i post a new video you'll be notified so thanks very much for your support and i want you to share and practice 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 thanks very much so we'll first go to our slides and we'll start with as I have introduced the types of maps, I'm not going to uh, go into that again. I have talked about the types of maps. One is in the present and one is in the future. One is in the present and one is in the past. And then one is in the present. So these are three types of maps. And how will you be able to identify this type of maps? Look at the question, the dates or the period in the question or in the maps. So. If it is in the present, you know that there's no time indicated. It is just in the present. If it is in the past, then you are definitely going to, the date is going to tell you. The date is going to tell you that this is in the past. So if it was 2021, 1990, it's definitely in the past. If it is in the future, then something like 2025, 2040, 2040, and then um, 2035, these are all in the future, all right? So pay attention to dates in the question and in the map. Sometimes you might not find a date in the background statement or the question that has been given to you, but you will find it on the graph. So pay attention to that, especially the heading of the graph, which is the map. So when I refer to the graph in the in this lecture, I'm referring to the map. Okay. So let's go to our slides and then um, look at the uh, what I have for you today. So the essay structure. So the essay structure, you are going to follow this structure. The first paragraph, you write paragraph one. So you're not going to indicate paragraph one on your answer sheet. But your first paragraph you write is that you paraphrase 
the sentence given, okay, which I call the background statement. Paraphrase the background statement given, okay. Usually, you say you receive a statement like the graph illustrates or the light, the graph shows uh, the a map of let's say uh, a supermarket in let's say New York in 1990. So that question is what they will expect you to paraphrase. So you paraphrase the sentence. So the, the way to paraphrase a sentence is to use what synonyms. Use synonyms when paraphrasing the sentence. Then in the same paragraph one, you write the overview. The overview is the general trend, what you see at a glance. Okay, in other words, a summary of everything in the graph. It's a summary of everything you see in the graph. Okay, not what you interpret in the graph. Pay attention to that. What you see at a glance. What you see at a glance, not what you think or what you interpret. So in overview, they're not requesting for your interpretation or what your thoughts, but what you just see. I repeat, what you see at a glance. It is like a summary. And you are only highlighting the most important details, the most important data there. And those data are the main features. Let me put it that way. So uh, you can make two general statements about the map, okay? You should describe the map generally and write about the most noticeable differences between the two maps, all right? So you what what if it is just one map? So just write the notice not, the 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 key features that you you notice in the in that particular map. If it is one map, but if there are two maps, two maps, then after okay before and after before and after. these are in the past okay that's an example of a map now let's go back to our notes then so how have the buildings and leisure facilities changed so that is the general trend so the your general trend or the overview ask yourself some of these questions what are some of the changes that have taken place okay now you go to the paragraph two your, that is where you start with your main body paragraph one. Your main body paragraph one, here you are going to focus on the description of the details. So two or three, uh, three to four sentences about specific changes that have occurred. Okay. Three to four sentences about specific changes. So the emphasis is on what? Specific changes. Specific. Just highlight the specific changes that have occurred. Okay. I ought to be looking at your ability to ignore some irrelevant data. So some data which are not really significant, ignore them. You can ignore them. And then paragraph three will be your main body paragraph two. Okay. So main body paragraph two. And that also will focus on three to four sentences up still about specific changes. Specific what changes? So very important. Specific changes that have occurred. Okay. 
Now, what if it is just one map? And what are the specific changes that have occurred? So it was just one map. So you, you, you didn't find changes. You didn't find changes, but you only see structures. So if it is one map, what you do is that just look at the main features there or the major structures that you the structures you see there find a way to categorize them and you look at the categorization okay when we are looking at the language categorize them into two main groups okay group them into two and then you describe the first group in one par in one in the second paragraph and then the third second group in the third paragraph so we are following three paragraph structure. The introduction is made up of a paraphrase of the background statement. You paraphrase that background statement, then you write the overview. So the introduction is made up of two parts. Then the second paragraph is the body paragraph one. This is where you describe the specific changes that have taken place. Okay. And then the third paragraph, you still describe the specific changes that have taken place so you still group your data into two all right so look at how you can group your data okay now uh, let's see how you can uh, uh, actually uh, first of all before we even go into uh, Looking at a body, uh, what do you call it? A sample question. Let's focus on the language. Let's focus on the language. And the language we are going to look at is that first of all, when you find when you look at the graph or the, the map, ask yourself, can I see buildings? Buildings. Okay. So if you look at this map, for example. Can you see buildings on this map? On the first one, we don't see buildings. But the second one, we see buildings. So you see these buildings, conical in shape. Okay, you see another building here, another building, and then this building is towards the east. And the central part is the reception. Okay, so we see buildings here. So anything about buildings, so buildings, these are the language, this is the, the vocabulary that you use to describe buildings. So for buildings, you use words like demolished. So if it is in the past, and you say demolished. So demolished in the sense that when you compare the two, the two graphs, let's go to the graphs. When you look, when you compare the two graphs, if, for example, there was a building here, look, just follow my cursor. If there was a building here, all right, at the center, and then let's assume this is the first one. This is the first graph. Let's assume that this is the first graph. You see at the center, you have uh, buildings at the center here. So if 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 the first one, if this one is the, the after, then we say that these buildings have been demolished. These ones have been demolished. So... We find this empty, but this is after. So just what that was just an example. Okay. So compare the two maps. Where in the original uh map or the first graph, if you call, if you look at the second graph and you look at the location of the of the building compared to the first one, and you realize that no. This burden has been de demolished or it has been pulled down. Then you use words like demolished, knocked down, okay, knocked down, flattened, replaced, renovated, built, constructed, reconstructed, developed, extended, expanded, relocated, converted, and modernized. So if based on your assessment, based on what you see, you realize that it has been modernized, you use words, you use modernized. Okay. So let's look at some examples. Examples of this, uh, the uses of some of these words. Okay. Uh, so here, what we say is that, for example, the government demolished the industrial estate 
and developed a spot ground. So we have used words like developed, demolished. They removed, so use words like removed the shops and replaced it with skyscraper. A port was constructed. So we use when it comes to buildings, we use words like construct. Okay. The factory in the city center was demolished and relocated. See, these are key vocabulary related to buildings. So buildings and the changes that have taken place. The old warehouses were replaced with new hotels. Okay. The factory was converted into apartments. So these are converted. This is a good language. Okay. Now, so when it comes to buildings, you use these words depending on the tense. So if it is in the past, you should mind your, your tense and use the past tense if it is in the past. Okay. Now, trees. On the map, ask yourself, do you find trees and forest? Anything about trees and forest or vegetation? Then you use words like cleared. If it is in the past, say cleared. If it is in the present, clear. Cut down, chopped down, removed. Okay. Planted. So that is about trees and forest. Let's look at an example. The forest was cut down and replaced with shopping center. The trees were cleared, see, cleared to make way for houses, to make way for houses. All right. So it's a good language. Now, so we are talking about the changes that have taken place, the changes that have taken place. So always compare the location of the the forest, the vegetation, or the trees to the second graph. So you're always comparing. And that is the way to make the comparison in this uh, type of uh, uh, essay. That's the maps. Then when you see the, gra the map, also ask yourself, do I find roads, bridges, and railway lines, roads, bridges, and railway lines. So when anything that is related to transport, transport, for transport, you use constructed, built, extended, expanded, and removed. So you're talking about the changes. Okay, so use these words in, in blue. So let's look at some example. So they say the main road was extended. See this word extended and the new bridge built. So we built a bridge. We don't make a bridge. So make is okay, but built is the a, 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 a best. Okay. How about leisure facilities or the recreational centers? For leisure facilities, we use words like opened, set up, developed, commissioned. Okay, opened, set up, developed, commissioned. An example is a skate park was set up. So set up to the swimming pool. A park was developed. Okay, a park was developed. So these are recreational centers or leisure facilities. So you can group the, the, the information on the map under leisure facilities, roads, bridges, and railways, trees, and forests, and buildings. Okay, and buildings. Usually, the features on the map are about this or are under this. So you could decide to uh, group buildings and trees in one paragraph and then you describe then you go to a second body paragraph uh, let's say roads railways and bridges okay railway lines bridges and roads or 
leisure facilities you can group these two and also report that in another paragraph it depends sometimes you might find um, a map that you don't find any railway lines or bridges or roads so you will definitely find that the features on the map under any of these categorizations and use these words in blue to describe the changes to describe those changes that have taken place how about the general trend the overview the overview as i said ask yourself has there been any significant changes has it is there is the was it in the uh, industrial area okay what changes have taken place but you can be, let's look at the some of the general sentences you can write as general trend okay um for overview because you are writing um, a summary of what you see at a glance yes you can also use the word overall to start your sentence like we have been doing in other um, test areas under the writing task one you can still use overall but you can also use another good construction like over the period over the period especially if there has been if this if the, if the graphs are two okay and there has been a change so a change could be that it is progressing to the future it is in the future the other one is in the future or one is in the past and one in the present so that means there has been a change so you can say over the period the area witnessed dramatic changes so if based on your assessment you realize that there has been addition of significance of major structures or more structures you say dramatic changes okay also depending on the question given to you say for example nine from 1995 to 2005 the city center saw spectacular development spectacular development the village changed considerably so change considerably so it means that yes there were quite significant amount of uh, changes that took place that uh, that took place okay or structures that were added or removed during the 10-year period the industrial area was totally transformed so if you realize that about 90 to or 80 to 90 percent of it was changed then you say totally transformed over the past 20 years the residential area was totally reconstructed over the period the old docks were totally redeveloped okay these are all uh, good construction so totally redeveloped totally reconstructed totally transformed change considerably spectacular development dramatic changes these are this cater for or this describe the general changes that have taken place okay talk about the general changes that have taken place all right it is also important to pick two or three of the most noticeable differences in the map and write a general statement for each okay you can pick two or three of the most noticeable differences in the map and write a general statement for each all right what is the purpose this will be your overview paragraph this can also be your overview paragraph okay so the more specific changes should be included in your main body paragraph all right now let's also look at how you can uh, describe locations because you see a map like this you can't just describe the trees okay or the buildings okay without talking about the its location so it is a map so when you are mentioning the structure you should tell its location okay so let's look at some of the language you can use to describe the location so you can use words like to the left to the right not south east but when you say to the left to the right i would prefer that you use north south and east because 
uh, when you use north, south, and east, that's the accurate vocabulary, okay? The best vocabulary to describe that. To the left, to the right, they are okay, but they are too simple, all right? So, example, the forest to the north or to the south of the river was cut down. The golf course was constructed to the north. Look at it, to the north. The houses in the southwest of the town were demolished. So, southwest, in the southwest. Okay. The green fields to the north, to the northwest of the city where we develop as a park. So these are all, these are just um, prepositions, okay? Prepositions. So you can use something like prepositions like uh, at, in, to describe things on the graph. Okay, so use prepositions, all right? So, for example, dramatic changes took place in the city center. So, in is a preposition. To the south of the town, there is a golf course surrounded by trees. So, by, okay, then to the, these are all prepositions. Okay, so, so to the swimming pool, these are all prepositions. All right, by is a preposition. To is a preposition. On the banks of the river is a, a preposition. So use prepositions when you are describing set types of when you are describing or describing the location of the structure on the graph. Now we go to the final stages, which is to look at two map questions and then we look at how to answer the question. So, uh, as you watch this lecture, if you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section and I will answer your questions. Let's look at the first graph. It says two maps below show an island before and after the construction of some tourist facilities. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. So you are writing 150 words. So this is an island before and after the construction of some tourist facilities. So before, this was the structure of the, of the island. And then after that, this is the structure of the island. Now, in, in most maps, you find a key. Look at this. This is one stands for the footpath, and the second one is the vehicle track what is the length of this map so from this point to this point it says 100 meters but when you extend it you are going to find you're going to get approximately 250 uh, meters so this graph you can say is approximately 250 meters all right i don't think it is up to 300 meters but i will say approximately 250 meters somebody could say 270 meters that's okay it's an approximation so on the first map before what was on the map we find trees here to the east and then to the west and to the east so trees but the center is barely um, empty center was empty then to the far east, you see that it is, there is a beach here, beach at, on the map or on the island. After that, you see these changes that are taking place. If you look at this beach, it say swimming. So you see that it is now used for swimming, all right? Then you find some accommodation. This has been labeled. So it, these conical structures are accommodation. So you find accommodation, you can even count them. This is a restaurant center here, we find the reception, okay? Just 
um, linked by vehicle track okay then we have a pier and then we have these two structures here a yacht yacht okay we have yacht on the sea here now so these are the structures here so how will you group them you have vegetation you have vegetation we have buildings then you have transport means of transport so pier and then the foot park foot path and then the vehicle track for categorization and then we see swimming pool oh, oh sorry this is a beach okay so we have four categories so you can group them into two vegetation and buildings you describe it in one paragraph and then um the recreational center plus the uh this restaurant and reception so you can call it business center or business whatever commercial whatever then you group that to and then you group that you report it in another paragraph okay but here in the second paragraph um, in the second graph what you are focusing on is the major changes that have taken place the major changes that have taken place so what is it in in uh what which what is it if you compare to if you look at before what is it here that is not here that is not here in the after the second graph the graph below so those are the specific changes all right so if we are going to write this then we are going to write our first paragraph and that is the introduction and introduction we paraphrase the background statement given and this is the statement two miles below show an island before and after the construction of some tourist facilities we are going to paraphrase that okay then write the overview what we see at a glance then this the second paragraph is that we describe the state of the map before before what is the state of the map before and then paragraph three is going to be described the changes so in second part second graph we only describe the changes that have taken place so let's look at a sample answer so we paraphrase the statement given so we say that both maps display an island before and after it was developed for tourism this so we have paraphrased that after the construction of some tourist facilities so it was for purpose for tourism okay then the second part the second sentence is the overview is the overview okay so the overview we say over the period over the period the island was completely transformed so you see i've used the word completely transformed with the addition of a hotel and a pier however the eastern part of the island appears to have been left on undeveloped so if you look at this the eastern part undeveloped appears to be undeveloped yes so i add some of the new features which has been what which have been added appear okay and then we find a hotel or we can say accommodation all right so we can add some of the new structures which have been added so you can always pause this video and then you look at the overview again so the overview we are focusing on the major changes uh, what do you, what do you call it the overall trend or the mid the, the the what we see at a glance we use a language which describes um everything that we see in the graph so we say that completely transform the the general um the overall changes that have taken place now we start the second paragraph the state of the map before the island is completely to 250 meters long, but initially it had palm trees dotted around it, was surrounded by ocean and had a beach to the west, and which is true. So 
The island is approximately 250 meters. It is uh, palm trees dotted around it, and then there's a beach to the west. All right. Then the second part, that's where you describe the changes that have taken place. So I said that the most noticeable additions are the hotels. Six buildings surrounding, um, so you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, so if you have nine here, and they have one, two, three, one, two, three, six. So six buildings surrounding trees. Okay, so we have six buildings. So the most noticeable additions. So it's a good uh, phrase. So we are highlighting the most noticeable additions. At the hotel room, six buildings surrounding some trees. So don't necessarily have to talk about the number of trees. So some trees have been built in the west of the island and nine buildings have been constructed in the center of the island. Between the two accommodation areas, a reception building and a restaurant have been developed. A pier has also been built on the south coast of the island, allowing yacht access to the resort. Apart from the trees, the beach remains the only natural feature to remain relatively untouched. However, it does appear that it is now used for swimming. Okay. So that is the change that have taken place. So if you look at it, you realize that we use words like have been built, okay? Have been built. Talk about the changes. Have been built, constructed for buildings, okay? You see? Constructed, developed. You got words like developed on the south. So we are talking about the you are using prepositions, talk about the location, okay? Access, right? Remains the only natural feature to, rel to remain relatively untouched, relatively untouched, okay? All right. Now, so now, currently, so talk about the current time, all right? So look at this map again, um, sorry. And then uh, you can pause it and then you write it yourself. Practice. So you find these buildings, then the pier connecting this reception to the restaurant. Or through this, you can assess all other features here. Self buildings to the uh, heading to the west, and then the beach, the western part is now used for swimming. The eastern part remains untouched okay now all right so um that is how it is so the buildings can be assessed by foot parts and then the the track parts let's look at the second one the second graph and the second graph is that it says you should spend 20 minutes on this task the plans below show a public park when it first opened in 1920 and the same park today. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. You are writing at least 150 words. So he says that it was opened in 1920. So definitely and same park today. So past and present. One in the past and one in the present. Because it says and same park today so the grand park 1920 this is how it looked like there's a fountain here and in the state for uh, musicians to to eat west they have uh two entrance uh two entrances are not one to the one on the arnold avenue and then one on the elton avenue to the south and then you have this ponds for water plant here. Okay, you can say at the north eastern part, rose garden to here is close to the entrance, and then to the other right, and then on the left, there's a seat 
We was guarding to so you see the seeds scattered. All right. Now, if we come to the Grange Park today, currently, so what are the changes that have taken place? So at the middle of fountain gate has been the fountain has been knocked down and then replaced with rose garden with seats provided. Then the stage for musicians are, are, has been converted into amphitheater for concerts. And then the seats at the um, eastern or the western parts, okay, of the of the of this park of this park has been what removed. They are being removed. Cafe, the rose garden has been converted into cafe. Okay, or has been removed and like a new cafe built. This pond for water plants has been converted into children's play area. Water feature has come to replace glass house. And then underground park has been constructed. The entrances on the Arnold and then Erton streets remain intact. So that is, in the nutshell, that is what it means. So you paraphrase the, the you write the introduction, okay? You write the introduction, it's made up of two parts. Paraphrase the background statement, then write the overview. So what is the statement given? This is the statement given. You paraphrase the statement. So let's paraphrase that statement. So it says the diagram compares the stage of Grange Park in 1920 when it was commissioned and its state currently. So when it was commissioned, opened, and its state currently. Then you write the overview. Overall, it can be seen from the illustration that Grange Park has seen major development. Major development. So you can leave it like that, or you can decide to add some of the major development like water feature or the amphitheater for concerts. You can choose to do that. Then you have to group your data into two. Look at the features. So here you can choose to report what you see in 1920 in one paragraph, and then this, you come to today, you just focus on the, on the major changes that have taken place. The major changes that have taken place. So let's see that in 1920. So we are referring to 1920. So the examiner will go to 1920 and go and look at this graph. So um, what was there? The Grand Park had a fountain situated at the center with a stage for singers to its west. There are there were two streets, the Arnold Avenue at the north, and then the Elton Street. At the south, and both had an entrance. Rose, three rose gardens and seats were sited at the borders of the park. A pond for the water for the water plant and a glass house were constructed at the northeast and the southeastern sectors, respectively. So we are describing this. Um, what we see on this park what we see on this park okay then you go to the changes that have taken place just focus on the changes that have taken place all right so when you look at the changes that have taken place say however because you are going to talk about changes so i'm contrasting however in recent times what is currently or today the park has the arnold avenue elton street and the two entrances intact Yes, the fountain has been knocked down and a bigger rose garden built with four seats surrounding it. The platform for musicians has been has also been demolished and an amphitheater for concert constructed. The rose garden beside the entr entrance to the north has been converted into a cafe with the children's play area now replacing the pond for water plants. Additionally, the glass house has been pulled down and made way for a bigger water feature and a gate for an underground car park seat uh, created to its right side. The rose garden located at the northwestern park is currently untouched. Okay, it's currently untouched. 
Now I've used some of some colors to indicate this. This indicates the overview. Okay. These yellow ones are the linking phrases. Linking phrases. Okay. They will check in all that. They look at some of the vocabulary in this red color. See, situated. So the Grange Park, situated. We are talking about the location. So location center. Okay, center of it, west. So you talk about the structure, talk about where it is located. Not very important. Sighted. So glass house. The, you're talking about the chain that happened. So say constructed. Constructed. Knocked down. Built. Demolished. Okay. Constructed. Again, replacing. Pulled down. Created. Untouched, located at. So, so talking about location. Okay. So these are very important. So pay attention to all this. You can pause this video and then you look at this again and see how I have used some of the language that relate to buildings. Okay. And the changes that have taken place, how I've described the changes that have taken place. All right. Now, you can always uh, type your question in the comment section. So uh, I want you to subscribe. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. But if you are subscribed, there's no need to hit the subscribe button again. If you hit the subscribe button, it's going to unsubscribe. So if I've already subscribed, do not subscribe. So I want you to now get some questions and then begin to what? practice. Practicing is what will actually uh, help you to improve. So practice, practice, practice. That is what will help you. So thanks very much. This is what I have for you today. I will bring you another lesson at another time. As I have said, share, like, and then if you have any question, you can put it in the comment section. I will come back and answer your questions. Thanks very much.